Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason. This is a daily relaxation session for stress, for anxiety, and for panic attacks. And for just general day-to-day -day reduction of anxiety and stress so that every day that you watch or listen to this session you can gradually discover and notice that your stress levels are somewhat reduced and it can be surprising sometimes to see how it gradually transforms how you feel and think and experience the world. And you can be listening to these or watching these sessions every day for let's say a couple of weeks and then you realize that actually your level of stress maybe was very high and now it's a lot less. And that can be a nice thing, a nice thing to notice and um, please let me know, you know, if you have these situations arising and, you know, post, post a comment on the video. But these sessions are varied and different and I was going to take a little break from doing sessions. So I've got a bit of a cold, but I'm going to try and get through this without coughing or sneezing. Now that I'm thinking of coughing and sneezing, I might end up coughing and sneezing. So, um, <coughs> see, that's, uh, so I've got my water. So I'm going to drink if I need to. So if for any reason you don't like seeing people drinking water, then, uh, maybe turn off now because I, I might end up having to drink some water just to soothe my little throat. So I can't suck anything while I'm talking to you. You know, like a lozenger or um, something for like cough medicine thing. So, um, let's start by doing a body scan it's always good to start with that I think because you can get to I don't know if you're anything like me sometimes I'm not actually aware of how I feel until I get in touch with how I feel it's it's kind of strange I think more so this is just an idea it might not be true but I feel it might be more so with people like myself who live alone and don't have any like regular contact with people when I'm at home. So I'll wake up and I'll get ready for going out or whatever. And I sometimes I'm not aware of really kind of what mood I'm in until I meet with another human. And then I realize, let's say if I get to work, so I'd arrive at work and realize that actually I'm not in a very good mood at all. But I wasn't aware of it before. Had I been living with somebody, which I had done in the past, uh, only with friends and stuff, but I've lived and waking up and seeing somebody instantly I kind of get a gauge of what level of mood I'm in because I see that person and if I have a reaction to them or to what they've said or to what they've done or maybe not even to them just at them for how I'm feeling so by doing the body scan by doing the mindfulness exercises I don't like the word exercises because it 
reminds me too much of school and I just don't want to do it. But they're not real, they're not hard, it's actually pleasurable, it's fun. And um, just before, uh, oh great, now I've yawned. I don't normally yawn when I do videos. Earlier on, I was laying on, on my bed and I was just being mindful. I was listening to the, ra um, to the birds singing or whatever they're, you know, making their sounds. I love the, the sound of birds. Pigeons, not so much, but you know, the, the like the nice sounds. The pigeons seem to kind of overtake um, everything, but it's still nature. I like hearing the nature. I like hearing the wind, the, the tree blowing. And um, yesterday it was raining, uh, especially in the evening. It was raining quite not heavy, but like regular. And it was nice just to hear the rain. And for me, that's like a mindfulness process where. Okay, I'm not particularly focusing on my body. I'm not particularly focusing on how I'm feeling, but I am also not focusing on problems and worries, things that I'm concerned about, uh, things that I'm uh, upset about. I'm not thinking about uh, relationship issues or financial problems, you know. At that moment, I'm focusing on the sound. And at the same time as focusing on the sound, I'm also focusing on my body, the the bed supporting my back, my hips, my lower back, and my legs and my feet, and my arms as well, if my arms are at the side of me, my hands. And it feels quite nice to just get in touch with how I physically feel, as well as listening to the sounds around me, whatever those sounds may be, even if it's cars in the distance or um, a helicopter going past, you know, it's, whatever it is, I can just, it's happening. I'm in the moment. Um, I generally close my eyes during that time because I don't find that I get any kind of mindfulness with my eyes open when I'm perhaps at home. But I do when I'm out. Let's say if I'm walking somewhere in nature, the visual side of it is just as powerful in some ways as what I hear and what I smell and what I feel, you know, if the the feeling, let's say I'm walking on the grass, the feeling of the grass underneath my feet, uh, the smell of the grass, the smell of the mud maybe, the smell of the farms because I live in a countryside, the sounds of the traffic, but also maybe the sounds of the children playing or the sounds of the cars um, going past, sounds of the wind sounds of the birds and trees all that stuff it kind of is soaking in but then the visual side seeing the results of the wind you know the trees blowing maybe plants and flowers blowing in the wind maybe there'll be people being blown around by the wind you know um, I just gotta wait for the camera to come back well, the camera went all foggy then when I was talking. And the sometimes by absorbing that into my eyes, just noticing, but without making any judgments or criticizing it or doing some kind of internal commentary on what's happening. 
unless of course something out of the ordinary happens and of course I'm going to come into awareness and like oh I need to do something about this situation but generally when I'm outside I like to walk you could, I, it's called like walking meditation I'm a slow walker by uh, my very nature I'm a slow walker I'm a slow talker I'm a slow walker I can talk fast sometimes and I can walk fast sometimes um, but my general status you know my general kind of normal my normal kind of mode if you want to call it that would be fairly slow a fairly slow kind of with what I do I'm not I'm not like a rusher I don't rush uh, generally so mindfulness walking or meditation you know walking meditation I find is really useful and something that I've been doing since I was a child I just didn't realize I was doing it so I'd be walking home from school age let's say 10 long long walk everyone it's probably a half an hour walk really I'd, I'd take maybe an hour hour and a half to walk it I just walk one foot in front of the other but really noticing how my feet felt on the ground noticing the wind noticing the temperature of the air on my face and on my hands um, maybe on my head blowing my hair being aware of whatever smells were around whatever I could hear because I'd be walking past people's houses sometimes I could hear um, the television maybe they're watching television other times there's the big other place there was a he had an aviary and there was these little parakeets or um, budgies tweeting another house further up would have little bells you know that blow in the wind and probably annoy the hell out of their neighbors at night and then there's the smells the smells of people cooking their dinner because I told, I left school at half three, but I didn't get home till, you know, nearly dinner time. So I could smell the different smells of people cooking the food. Maybe some people were having a big cooked dinner. So maybe I could smell toast burning. Or maybe I could walk past and smell the smells of the drain being washed out by the council you know washing the drain out and all the sewage get smell that or further up there'd be a road being tarmacked and I could smell the the freshness of that tarmac and if it's being laid and I always like that smell and being aware of walking on the different types of pavement some parts of the pavement would wobble you know so I'd have to be careful not to trip maybe if it's winter and it's icy certain parts would be with snow some parts would be have salt on or sand you know so it would be safe to walk on it without slipping maybe I'd have to walk in the bit of the road just to avoid it maybe there'd be flooding be flooded pavements or flooded part of the road I have to walk around so I'd have to watch physically how I was maneuvering myself being really careful with my feet how I treaded but also being aware of how it felt on my feet as I walked and I already did this when I was a child 
and it was my way I suppose of I wasn't purposely being mindful or purposely trying to be meditative because I didn't know anything about that stuff at that age I think what I was trying to do is just have an opportunity to be myself to be with myself to be with the only person that actually um, got me which is me I'm the only person that's ever got me and maybe we're all the same maybe we're all the only person that ever gets ourselves maybe but that was like a special time I could walk sometimes I'd sing sometimes I guess it's the opposite to be mindfulness mindful I'd have a look good old sing song maybe sing some of the songs from Greece or Adam and the Ants song because that was around that time early 80s so that's something that can be incorporated in your life and it really helps it can help you to just get in touch with how you feel to get in touch with just that sensation of being alert of being yourself you know I'm not trying to be anyone else I'm not trying to um, adapt or fit into other people's ideas of what you should be or your idea of what their idea is of what you should be or how you should act or behave or feel instead you can feel how you feel be how you are be in touch with how you actually feel in this moment without any excuses without any apologies without permission from other people because you don't need that it's just something you can do yourself and being able to take that power back because it just reminds me um, when I was yeah even late teens yeah my late teens even even my 20s even but but especially my late teens I didn't feel as if my opinion was valid um, at all not even a percent one percent it's um, very much felt kind of dismissed didn't feel that I had the right to hold an opinion and I should just regurgitate other people's belief systems and just copy what I'd learned from other people the problem with that is I just couldn't do it I just um, couldn't relate to other people in a way to be able to copy them didn't admire anyone um, to want to be like them not in reality I mean of course you know as movie stars Bruce Lee for example you know I wanted to be like him when I was doing martial arts and various like boxes and you know different people over the years but comedians and stuff but actual people the idea of just fitting in and getting excited over 
the same things as uh, the people that I went to school were getting excited over. And I just didn't have that um, self-belief that I was valid. And it's taken many years to get to the point, to get to the realization that everybody's opinions are just as valid as anybody else's. A lot of the time, opinions are just that, just opinions, meaningless, pointless, prejudice, homophobic sometimes, maybe racist, maybe sexist, maybe full of hate, maybe full of love, maybe naive, maybe just limited because of our own life experiences are limited. Everyone's got a limited outlook because it's shaped by our lives. But everybody does have a right to have an opinion and to have their own mind. And I think the thing with things like homophobia, racism, some of these hate, hateful kind of thoughts, they're not people's original thought patterns. They're not, that person's not being themselves. They're copying what they've learnt and they're just doing what's comfortable because sometimes it's easier to be comfortable than and fit in I guess than to be original and to not fit in at all and feel like an outcast luckily I never fitted in never felt like I fitted in anyway never have so um, I guess I'm lucky on that in that way um, couldn't even fit in with the Buddhists could you believe it mm. That's a funny laugh, isn't it? Mm. So my point is with mindfulness, with being in touch with who you are, gives yourself self-validation. It gives yourself time to actually Maybe get to know who you are. Get a bit more aware of how you feel about certain things in your life. I mean, there was uh, recently George Michael, the singer, George Michael died um, and I was a big fan of his right from I was a kid since I was a kid with when he was in Wham and also as a solo artist um, I loved loved his music and I was a big fan and so when he died it was awful to, to hear that and I saw somebody posted on Facebook something really quite nasty uh, with a, a homophobic slur towards him as well. And the point they were trying to make, I got what the point there was, is they didn't want to jump on the bandwagon of pretending to be upset for someone that they didn't even like. This is what their, their idea was, I think. But there was a um, very strong reaction in me towards what I saw. And I became very defensive towards George Michael, very defensive. Not about him dying, but about his sexuality. Never cared about his sexuality. I had no, I've got no interest in anybody's sexuality. 
not even my own. I just don't, it's just things like that don't interest me. But when I heard that hatred towards him, it really affected me. I really kind of just felt very agitated and angry by that and I had to take some time off I I had to step back turn the computer off and just kind of move away from the internet for a while just a few hours so that's people you know who have opinions some people like to have opinions to they get pleasure out of upsetting people and you may say what's this got to do with relaxing well in order to feel less stress and more able to deal with anxiety and panic and all that stuff is being able to deal with those types of people or okay instead of using that word in people who enjoy causing or try to cause others to be upset try to word it in a way instead of uh, saying those people those types of people because that same person that's being cruel could also at the same time be one of the most loveliest people in the world be a wonderful parent maybe as for a living they may save people's lives um, so nothing's quite as simple as we would like it to be and that's the thing is uh, life would be easier if we could just say that person's bad and that person's nice and that person's evil but it's not quite as simple as that life doesn't work that way and that's why I think a lot of people do like to buy into the stereotypical uh, image of how they feel they should be so maybe being homophobic racist uh, sexist um, maybe it's easier to be like that than to have their own original thoughts because then that's more work it takes energy you know I guess in a sense if you a lot of the wording I don't know what it's like in other countries but in England there's a lot of phrases that are used because people can't be bothered to think up another version of that you know as an example I was watching a TV show and they were talking about buildings uh, property and uh, how small the, the rooms were and this lady said the rooms not even big enough to swing a cat and that's an old saying you know the rooms not big enough to swing a cat apart from the fact that that's a quite horrible thing to be doing swinging a cat but I kind of switch off a little bit when I hear the same old sayings being used and I have it off the top of my head I haven't got an alternative for that not not probably useful but it's just to tap into that part of our creativity to come up with a new terminology a new example meaning the same thing that takes effort and it means moving away from safety from familiarity
So I can understand how some people stick with that because it's comfortable, it's safe. Well, it's not safe, but it feels safe. It's familiar. But imagine what it would be like if you did just decide to use different terminology. How much fun that would be. So I think it's useful maybe to think of it in a sense of, ah, oh, so that's why they're being like that. Maybe that's why they're being like that. It's not because they're perhaps horrible people or, you know, maybe it's because they're scared, scared of change, scared of what would happen if they break away from that group of friends because ultimately when you change your mind and decide to actually be authentic to yourself you may lose friends you know you may your whole life may change But when you do that, you'll have less stress, less anxiety, and much less opportunity for anything like panic attacks to happen because you're being yourself. You're not pretending. You're not ignoring those feelings inside you. You're recognizing them and you're dealing with them. So I didn't cough through this. This isn't quite the session I was looking to do. It's a little bit different from what I was expecting. I could go on for quite a while with this. But I hope it was useful. I hope that, you know, this all adds together with the result of relaxation. This is connected to yesterday's session. It will be connected to tomorrow's session. It's also connected to the very first session, day one of this uh, series. It's all connected. It's also connected to the sleep hypnosis sessions that I do on Thursdays. It's all connected in a way that it's not just about me saying, you will feel this way when I count to 10, you will not think this anymore, and you will think this from now on, and la 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 la, and just, I could do that. Sometimes I do do a bit of that, but this is something more. This is options. This is giving you some ideas. And when someone gives you an idea, even if you don't actually, for whatever reason, take it on board at that particular moment in time, you're walking away with a gift. And it's a gift that you can just look at, you know, it's not costing you anything, it's just a gift. It's like a, a coat that you can try on, a jacket, a scarf, a hat, some shoes, whatever, something that you can try on to see how it feels, maybe something to eat, just test it. It's just a gift, every session is a gift. I think that's the name of one of my sessions, that was uh, the present is a present. That was one of my sessions from years ago. So that's the end of this one. My name's Jason. Thank you for subscribing and watching and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. See ya.